the number one show I know that we all agree on. Let's break the bank with X Lurk and Dion. I just want to um, quickly talk about the PGA versus Live stuff. Like you were pretty pro Live, like from day one. I was anti Live. I was pro Live in that look. To me, I, and I still stand by it to this day. I think the exodus of players to live would have been a lot more massive had Phil Mickelson simply not had that disastrous press conference where he was pretty much saying like, look, yes, it's blood money, but it's a shit ton of blood money. So I'm putting my morals to the side. If he just shuts the fuck up and they just, you know what I'm saying? Because at that point, remember, the PGA, all the players were pretty much complaining like, yo, the PGA tour is doing its dirty. We're underpaid. The revenue sharing isn't right. Like none of this, these numbers make sense. Our, you know what I'm saying? The money distribution isn't right. Everybody was kind of like, yeah, it makes sense why they would want to go to live if they're throwing his bag at them. And then Mickelson just put his foot in his mouth. And then that's when you saw a lot of players who were going to go. All of a sudden now they stopped. And then that gave people like Rory the opportunity to kind of stand on their pedestal and, you know, preach all this more high ground bullshit. And even like the commissioner, like, hey, I actually, you know, I challenged the PGA Tour players. Have you ever had to apologize for being a member of the PGA Tour? And it's like, bro, they're like the NCAA to me. Like, no one should be shedding a tear for the PGA. Like, they were fucking corrupt and they were doing players dirty and shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, the money won, right? And it was always, it was always gonna happen. Uh, yeah, um, I mean, so, so this is why I wanted to talk about it. I don't actually think the money won. So here's what I think, here's what I think happened. Um, I had my gut feeling kind of felt this way. I mean, I'm not going to like dive into my work history, but just having worked in certain channels, like when things happen abruptly, I kind of go on a conspiracy side of things, but the conspiracy normally turns out true because it's like the most realistic option. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the feds found something. I think, I think that's what happened because both parties have lawsuits back and forth, right? And the yeah. worst thing, the worst thing you can say about Saudi Arabia is out in the open. We know they hate women. We, we, we know they hate the LGBTQ community. We know they did 9-11. Like everything they do negatively is out in the open so that they don't really care, right? Yeah. I think the PGA has some skeletons that the live lawyers and the Department of Justice like brought to the table. And Liv said, listen, we can do this merger. You still remain your own entity. You, like nothing changes for you. You just allow us to have some control and these players to make more money and no one knows what we know. And that's why I think you see the abrupt switch. And uh, I mean, I'm a huge golf fan. Bill Mickelson said on the PGA Championship Sunday a few weeks ago, he's like, I know something no one else knows. Um, Rory's temperament the last couple months makes me think Rory McIlroy knew and was like, yo, you sold me out to dry and I fucking I did it and now look at I cost myself $500 million and these dudes are going to be back on the tour here in a few months. Now we don't know the details of the merger it remains to be seen if the live players can play on the PGA Tour officially that's oh, they still, th they will ultimately, but like at the moment that's at least up in the air um I don't know if it'll happen this season per se, like based off the way they're talking, but the department of justice is coming out today and saying like the PGA might not be able to keep their like uh, tax free form, like their nonprofit. I think they got some money laundering that they've been doing. Ultimately. I think all these leagues money laundered, like the, the NFL definitely money launders, but these other leagues don't have to worry about a nut, like a foreign entity deciding we're going to attack these guys to to drum up exactly the, all the bad stuff they've been doing. And I think that's just what happened. I think this, this smells like a lawsuit settlement, basically. Like, let's wash our hands. Like, everybody's clean type of deal. We all know discovery is people's worst enemy, right? It's not even a trial. It's just a discovery phase. You know what I'm saying? And so much shit can come to light during the discovery yeah. phase that it's like, you know, and that's usually where you see settlements because you don't want the discovery coming to light. You know what I'm saying? But, um, which by the way, I'll tell you a funny story about that after the pot but um <laughs> no it's, 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 it's hilarious discovery is hilarious but but yeah man but so the one thing that i did here on simmons pod part of the mergers that they're creating a for-profit i guess marketing sector and that is how the rory's and the roms and all those guys are going to get paid right because they can say we're going to give rory 
a $300 million, you know, image rights deal, which is complete bullshit, but that's kind of how they're going to make it up to them because they're going to have to take play, take care of the players that kind of stood ground. The Tigers, you know, gave up however many hundreds of millions of dollars. They're going to find a way to kind of pay them off and get them to shut the fuck up. So that way this thing can proceed smoothly. So that way it doesn't get any other than it has to. And then we'll just get back to just, you know, the old golf that we were accustomed to. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah. What I find interesting and I'm curious about, like, um, like as a sports fan like yourself, I don't – Liv's done, right? Like that tour mm-hmm. will cease to ex- – like this is probably the final season. Yeah. That tour will cease to exist. Like – the, the, the Saudis never actually cared about that tour. They cared about power, and they just got their power. Do we think they do that again? Yeah, man, money money talks, man. Like, like what, what sport or, like, league specifically do you think? I don't think the NBA, only because of that new stupid-ass tax apron that came in, the Steve, that, that nullifies the Steve Ballmers of the world, right? Because it doesn't have much money you have. You're putting your basketball t- at operations at risk once you get your payroll to a certain threshold. So Saudi money means nothing in the NBA. I would look at a sport like MLB, you know what I'm saying, where there's no there's no salary cap. Now, because they're the owners do have significant power, you could see them join together to kind of keep that money out, knowing what somebody coming and spending that kind of money would do to them. Because let's be honest, like, what's the C word? The C word. When the teams get together and they decide on something behind the scenes. Oh, uh, I don't know the word. I know what you you're talking about. You know, you yeah, know I know what you're talking about. But they coll- collusion. And MLB, yeah, yeah. they collude. They collude to keep player salaries down. They collude to keep the minors leaguers in poverty. Like there's a lot of collusion. So the owners are a lot more unified in baseball than say somewhere like football, to where it's pretty much like Jerry Jones and you know, the Patriots owner, Bob Kraft, have most of the power. Maybe the NFL. Now, the one thing we've seen in the NFL was that money is king. They will sell their fucking soul for a dollar. So if as some part of expansion deal, each, you know, each owner gets to walk away with a fat check, I could see some Saudi money being introduced to the NFL. And yeah. the NFL has never been one for more high ground. They don't give a shit. They give a fuck about bottom line. You know what I'm saying? So whatever, you know, they could, and that helps everybody, right? If the, if the Saudis come in and buy like, I don't know, like the, the Jacksonville Jaguars or the Cincinnati Bengals for like billions of dollars over asking price, all that does is make Jerry Jones richer. Because they're like, if the Bengals went for four or five billion, what are you going to pay for the Cowboys? Or what are you going to pay for the New York Giants or the Steelers? And that would artificially inflate the value of all the other franchises by one of the bottom feeders getting sold for significantly more than what they're worth. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So maybe the NFL. Um, Cause yeah, other than that, I mean, they tried it with MMA, but man, you know what I'm saying? With the fight Island and all that shit, but. Yeah. So I got, I got three theories. Boxing's obvious, the obvious one. I don't really know how they would. I don't really know how that would work other than people just fighting in Dubai a lot, which like, Already is going to happen they, anyway. You know what I mean? Like trying, but the the problem is is that it because like they were offering Manny Pacquiao and Floyd like mad money to fight for the longest, but nobody has taken the bag yet. You know what I'm saying? The WWE did. They took the bag. You know what well, I'm saying? They. I don't. I don't think that officially happened. I think so. It, they ended up not buying WWE in uh, the UFC, not the UFC, but the company that owns the UFC bought the WWE. WME or whatever, the media group. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, But my second theory is obviously the NBA um, because of the worldwide exposure they have. Plus, I want to say there's four or five owners in the NBA that own uh, English Premier League teams, at least on the minority level. Same with the NFL for what it's worth. So it's like when you, obviously the owners have to approve of something, but if you get to the table and you got five votes already, it's like, I mean, imagine being the other ones that say no. You know what I mean? The the backlash would be a lot. Um, and then here's my conspiracy theory on Messi. I think they're gonna buy the MLS. Yeah, <laughs> I think that, I think they're just gonna be. 
I think they're just gonna be like, Messi, you didn't want to play for us in Saudi Arabia. All right, you're gonna play for us in America now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. They they want soccer, they want a World Cup. What what they are doing is sports washing. But do you think it'd be easier if they just bought like the NWSL? Right? No, I, th- I think the ML, I think the MLS because they what what they want more than anything is controlling rights on the World Cup in 2025 or six, whatever year it is. 20, whatever year it is, doesn't matter. What they want is involvement in that, right? And that's why they've been gung-ho about all these Premier League teams, because the Premier League teams are going to be the ones that have the most players that are going into the World Cup, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh, PSG, no one cares about PSG. Um, same with some of these other teams. So the more control they can get over that World Cup, the better the world. I mean, Inter Miami now has Messi. A lot of those stadiums are going to be the same stadiums that host like World Cup games. Same with the NFL stadiums. Like it makes sense. What all they're doing right now is sports washing. Um, yeah. all, everything they've done that's negative, we will forget about it because they will spend money on stuff we enjoy. There is nothing bigger than the World Cup. Um, so the first step is get as much control on America as possible by 20 whatever, and then host your own World Cup. And then one day you'll have your own leagues, probably based in America still, but th- their money has an expiration date and they know it. So it's like <laughs> they're going to throw as much as they can over the next 10 to 15 years before we're all driving Teslas instead of, you know, driving gas vehicles. Uh, probably longer than 10 to 15 years, but you get the point. Like, they don't have long to do what they want to do. So I think the MLS, like, I think that makes the most sense, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. And it's probably that price tag is probably feasible because no, I mean, they probably go for the cost of like the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? So you can buy the Cowboys or you could buy the entire MLS. You know what I'm saying? They could probably get the MLS if you combine Ronaldo and Messi's contracts. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. I think they valued Inter Miami at $600 million today. They offered Messi $1.6 billion. Like $600 million, that's a good chunk of change. Yeah. But if that's the team with Messi, so it's probably top three highest value, like <laughs> there's going to be teams that are probably valued at like, like that Kansas City team is probably like $35 million. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> It's absolutely. nothing. Yeah, no, absolutely. 